Now we are going to invite Dr. Dixon Chibanda, whom we invited from Zimbabwe to help share his thoughts on the grandmother inclusive work in Senegal and in the wider African context. Dixon Chibanda started the friendship bench in one of Harare's township called Mbari in 2007 and conceptualized the friendship bench where grandmothers serve as advisors for moderate mental health issues. He has been involved in mental health research for many years. Dixon is a key player in bringing various stakeholders from local health authorities, health professionals, national and international researchers and donors together to form successful collaborations. In his role as principal investigator, he has led the Friendship Bench team through a rigorous exercise of the randomized control trial, which was able to deliver evidence of the intervention effectiveness. Dixon Chibanda is also director for the African Mental Health Research Initiative called AMARI. Um, Dixon, the next 10 minutes are yours, and I want to take advantage of me still having the mic to invite everyone to make use of the Q&A box just underneath your, your Zoom screen. If you have a question you would like the panelists to address, please use the Q&A box there. Thank you so much. Dixon. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to start off by, by thanking Judy and Anneli. Um, really great. Um, the, the first time I met Judy a couple of years ago, I was pleasantly surprised to, to, to learn that the work that I was doing in Zimbabwe uh, resonated so much with what she was doing up in Senegal. And we had never met before that, you know. And so I, I thought my contribution to this webinar would really be more as a way of really reinforcing and emphasizing the need, you know, for this, the work that, um, that Judy and, uh, and her team have been, have been doing over the past couple of years in Senegal. In fact, I, I would go as far as to say, you know, with the great results that we are seeing, my, my next question is, how do we take this to scale? What are the next steps that, that we need to look into, Judy, for, for, for this work that you're doing, this amazing work you're doing to go to scale? Um, I only have one slide, and it's a slide of a, uh, a picture of the grandmothers that work on, um, on the friendship bench, which I just wanted to, to, um, to use to illustrate um, the power that elderly women in communities across Africa have which um, really is what you've just heard focusing on, uh, on Senegal. A, a couple of years ago, when I used to do uh, a substantial amount of, um, of consultants is for the World Health Organization, I had the opportunity to travel to many different countries uh, in Africa. Um, and one of the things that was very conspicuous um, even then was the way research organizations, um, non-governmental organizations uh, were keen to exclude the elderly in, uh, in community related work. Um, the science was so much focused on, um, on trying to almost um, bring to, um, to Africa that which was perceived to be what worked in the north without taking into consideration the culture and the context and the role that the elderly, the, um, the elderly communities in, uh, in, in, in African communities um, um, play. And so I think when we look at some of the lessons uh, from Africa, uh, say the HIV uh, you know, epidemic, and the lessons of how uh, Africa navigated through that. I see a lot of resemblance in the role that grandmothers uh, in Senegal have played where they become you know, that vehicle for change, um, particularly for, for younger people. Um, grandmothers um, 
providing or facilitating change, which we've just heard, and the grandmothers um, being the decision makers. There's this misconception again that um, it's the men that make all the decisions in Africa. One of the things we've learned from Friendship Bench is, is that the grandmothers are actually the custodians of the local culture and the wisdom. And Senegal is, is producing exactly the same result. Um, so from a public health point of view, grandmothers are critical because they are dependable, they are reliable, and they are rooted in their communities. And they are part of the wider extended family concept. And so when I look at the work that, um, that you have been doing with the Grandmother Project um, in Senegal, and when I think of the African context uh, in terms of the value of elderly people, particularly elderly, elderly women, uh, this is a project or an initiative which can resonate with most African societies, most African communities. And, and I think the challenge that um, we need to start thinking of or looking at is how can this model be replicated? How can, um, can the work, the amazing work that you're doing in Senegal be, be replicated so that grandmothers um, uh, across Africa are integrated a lot more in the care and the development of, um, of girls in African communities, not only within the context of um, providing maternal and child health and preventing early pregnancies, but um, you know, education um, and, um, and, and some of the other issues around um, protecting the rights of, um, of girls in, um, in African culture. And we do know that, um, you know, generally these grandmothers are, are rooted in their communities and they have a very good understanding of, um, you know, a lot of the dynamics at play within families, within the communities uh, and with, within the wider um, social interactions and networks that exist. You know, there's, um, there's, uh, there's an African proverb which says, when your grandmother tells you something, you don't run to ask your mother whether it's the truth. But when your mother tells you something, you often will run to your grandmother to ask her if it is the truth. You know, and what we're seeing you know, with this uh, amazing work that you're doing, Judy, um, is, is that grandmothers can be brought to the center of the development of girls across Africa. There's also, there's also an element of cost effectiveness that we often talk about in public health, you know? Um, and, and you have these grandmothers who are not only rooted in their communities, but they are willing oftentimes to provide a service for free because they have vested interests in their communities. And from a public health uh, point of view, uh, empowering these women makes perfect sense for better development across, across Africa, which is, is what you are doing in your, in your project. So i just like to conclude by, by, by mentioning uh, the fact that they are, um, although we have limited projects uh, across Africa, which are emulating the work that, that you are doing, um, um, Judy, in Senegal, working with the elderly population, because often when you think of the existing programs, the, the focus is just young girls alone and exclude the elderly, exclude the grandmothers, because they are more likely to do harm than good. But when you actually involve them in a meaningful way, right from the beginning, as you uh, beautifully highlighted through the process of using your theory of change and then coming up with the relevant questions and support, you get very positive results. But it's also about empowering the grandmothers, empowering them to be able to use the necessary tools that make them better communicators and able to reach out to help um, the girls within, within their communities. So I, I think um, in conclusion, my key question is, how do you take this model to scale? How can this be replicated 
um, as we see it working in Senegal? How can it work beyond Senegal? I'll stop there. Thank you.